Hello everyone and welcome back. We're going to continue our study of objects and arrays. Today we're going to talk about nested objects and arrays. Now in arrays and objects both, each piece of data can be whatever data type you want. They can be a boolean such as true, it could be a string like Josh, it could be a number 34, it can be null, it can be undefined, it can be any, kind, any type of data you want. It can also be an array or an object. And whenever you have an array or an object inside of another array or object, they're said to be nested because they're nested inside of each other, kind of like those Russian nesting dolls. To give you a real-world example, you might have a post on some sort of social media. So const post equals, and it'll be an object. Generally speaking, these things will have an ID, and an ID will just kind of be a random string. Oftentimes they'll have an author, and that'll just be your username. And then they'll have whatever text you wrote. I loathe social media. Because I do. Then you might have comments on that. So here's where it gets special. These comments, generally speaking, are an array of comments. So I might have a comment that's actually an object where the author is another user, user2, we'll do user1, and then their text is me too. Then I might have another one. It's going to follow the same schema, author, user2, text, I love it. I might have another one, author, user3, text, I don't really care. So I now have a nested array because I have an object inside of there is an array. That array is nested inside this object. And I even have nested objects inside that array because this is an array of objects. So these posts right here, this is one post, it's got an ID and author text, and then it has three comments. If I wanted to access this comment right here, I would call post.comments because comments is one of the keys of the value, but comments is an array, so I can't do another dot, so now I have to access it via the index. So if I wanted the first one, it would be zero. And you'll see that returns that object right there, me too. If we wanted to go one further, if we wanted to get the text, just the text, we would do add the dot text, and it would just return that text. If I wanted to get all of the comments, I might do post dot comments, which is an array. This type of, of nested arrays and nested um, objects and things like that will come up a lot when we start talking about APIs and getting data from web APIs. To give you an example, I've pulled up the openweathermap.org um, API. And they have a lot of cool APIs in here, which allow you, API, in case you're not familiar, is application programmer interface. It lets you request data from them, and they send it back in a standardized format. You can see here they have, they send back, whenever you hit this particular endpoint, they send back a single object with all the data inside. Inside they have a city, with the city key, which returns an object. Inside of that they have ID, name, coordinates, where the coordinates are an object. They also have country and time zone. And then after city, because this is all one key value pair, they have a couple more like this, like this, like this. Then they have the list. This is a 16-day forecast, and these are the list of forecasts. So the first one, this is all one-day forecast. It tells you the time, sunrise, sunset, the temperature at different times. You'll notice temperature is another object. Feels like, and there's another object. So... You can see here that they have that, that a lot of times you'll get this nested structure. So if I was looking at this, and let's say, let clear the console and zoom out a little bit so we can actually see some something. Actually, I'm going to put the console over on the right side so we can see it easier. Let's say that I wanted to get the nighttime temperature. This is Kelvin, by the way. We're not all going to die a fiery death. Um, the nighttime temperature on this particular day. To access that, I would come in and I would get um, whatever the object, whatever I, I declared this object as. So let's say I called it x dot. I'm coming down here to list. And then because list is an array, 
I would have to access the first item on that array right here. Then I would come into temp, and then I would finally get to night. So this is these are these are your directions. X would be the, the outer one, and again, this would be anything I named I, what I whatever I named it. And then I would go in and follow their structure. List is the key I want. The value for that key is an array of objects. So I want the first object, the first item in that array, which turns out to be an object. Then I want the temp key, which is right there. And inside the temp key, because temp is another object, I want the night key, which finally gives me the value I want. And you will get very used to doing this kind of stuff. It's pretty easy once you get down to it, especially since you can just start here with that and hit enter and, and see what it logs. Say, okay, now I need to go into the list. Now I need to go into this. Now I need to go into that. So it, it works itself out pretty easily. So that's just why you need to know about nested objects and nested arrays and things like that. It's a cool way to structure data. It makes it easier. In case you're not familiar, this is called JSON, um, JavaScript Object Notation. It's different than JavaScript, but it follows the format of JavaScript objects. And we'll learn more about JSON later, especially once we start making calls to APIs. And that is it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.